Welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. And today we are talking about blending two different gradient patterns. So you see six examples of them here. And these are in fact gradients. These aren't pictures, these are gradients. So I'm going to click on this one. And you can see it's grouped. There's actually two gradients here. So I'm going to hit the tab key that gets the bottom one. And you see it's going red to purple. I'm going to hit my tab key. It gets the top one that's going orange to purple. So clearly there's two gradients that are interacting with each other. Now I found that when you're doing these blended gradient patterns, six stops works ideal. Now you can put 10 stops in here, but I found that it gets too muddy. Now you can use any combination. If we take a look at these two, the top ones have only three stops, the bottoms have six stops, and you can see they're not quite as dynamic as the other ones. So I would recommend about six stops in for each, the top and bottom gradient, and you get something that's really quite dramatic. How would you use these? Just like you use any other gradient pattern. You can put them in sidebars, you can put them in shapes, and they work particularly well in text. And that's what we're going to show you. We're going to use them as a gradient pattern in text. So let's make a comparison between regular gradients and blended gradients in text. Okay, so here we have a typical linear gradient going left to right, purple to red, and we can see that in the text here. So that's nice, it's just not very interesting. And here we have a radial gradient, and you can see that we have it here too. Again, it's nice, just not interesting. Now, here we have a blended gradient made up of these two gradients. Now, if we look over here, there's your blended gradient. Which one is more interesting, this or these two? And I think you'll agree, this is far more interesting. Of course, this is actually interactive, so we can actually change the angle of the gradients and get a lot of different patterns. We won't do that here, we'll do it when we actually create it. Now, another way we're going to create our nice gradients is to copy and paste as a picture so that we can tile them. Okay, so I've taken this one, I've copied it, and I paste it into here. So you can see it's a tile, okay, and it looks pretty good, not too bad but you can clearly see the repeated pattern. It's okay, just not that interesting. Now I've taken the radial, I've copied that, pasted into here, and again, you can see it's a tile. Kind of interesting, but you can see the repeated pattern. Now I've taken this one, the blended pattern, copied that, and pasted into here, and it's very hard to see the repeated pattern. It's far more interesting. It looks like a lot going on there. So which is more interesting, this or either one of these? So you can see that the blended patterns really make your gradients far more interesting. Now as a bonus, what we're going to do is a combination. So we're going to be able to take a background tile texture like this, put a gradient on top, and be able to control how much of the background shows through as you see here. So we'll have a combination. Okay, now it's very important to understand how gradients actually fill an object. Now because we're going to be using two gradients as a blend, we should understand how gradients actually do that. Here I have a tall rectangle and it has a striped gradient. And you can see that it's an actual gradient just converted into stripes. It's basically this one converted into stripes. And we'll leave a link in the description. So if you want to turn your gradients into stripes, it'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to transfer this into this shape. Now the problem is this. This rectangle is tall and the text is wide. So this kind of demonstrates what's going on. So here's a rectangle, and you can see, because we're using center gradient, it centers itself right in the rectangle, and you can see the top part here. So you can see we have orange here, orange there, we can see the orange there and there. So what happens if I transfer this into something that's wide? Where will the orange be? Will it still be at the top? Let's check it out. Okay, so we're going to transfer the gradient. So once again, all you have to do is look at it. So we're looking at it right now. You click on the object you want to transfer it to, and hopefully it doesn't have a gradient. So you want to make sure it's just a solid color object. So we're going to go to text, and you can just say gradient, and it transfers the gradient. So if we look here, you can see that the orange is to the left and right. So this is basically what happens. So it goes in that way. So the orange stripes are to the left and right, just like you see here. And if we were to take this and rotate it and just line it up, you'll see that's exactly what's going on. Okay, 
So you can see that it's a little different when you're going from something tall into something wide. It's not exactly the way you expect it to be. So it's beneficial when we're doing the blended gradients to actually create the rectangles to the actual proportions that we're actually going to be inserting them in. So rather than having tall rectangles, we should actually have wide rectangles that fit the parameters of the text. Now, if you saw our previous video where we showed you how to smooth out banding in gradient, that's these hard edges, you'll probably recognize the slide because we used it then. So since we already have it, we might as well make use of it again. So I need two different gradients. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to copy it, go to the next slide and paste it. Now you also want to make sure that all the shapes have their handles pointing in the same direction. They should be pointing up. So your rotation handle always points to the top. So this is the top of the object. So you want your gradients to be pointing to the top like that, and you want your object you're going to be putting them in, in this case text, to have the handle to the top. Okay, It just makes it a lot easier when you're rotating the gradients because the gradient rotation is taken from right here. So if I were to take this and set the angle back to zero, you can see that they're matching. So we're going green to yellow, left to right. And we're doing the same thing here because this is the top. So this is the left and this is the right. So you can see that right here. So if you keep your handles pointing to the top and all of them, then it makes it a lot easier to know how this is rotating. Okay. So keep your handles to the top for everything. And it'll just make the blended gradient and how it goes into the object a lot easier to control. Okay, let's blend our gradients. Now you can see that both these rectangles are in fact gradients. Now I'm going to take this one, I'm going to put it on top. Now normally I would align them together, but I want to keep them separated so I can show you what's happening. Obviously we have no blending happening here, so how does a blending happen? It's a very simple matter of making certain stops transparent. If you make them transparent, then the background blend shows through. So let's take the green, let's make it transparent. Let's take this one here. Let's make it transparent. Let's take this orange and make it transparent. Okay. So if I separate these two, you can see what's happening. The background is showing through here. So both of these are blending together. Now the problem is, of course, they're the both linear at a 90 degree angle. Well, that's not going to work. What makes this dynamic is that at least one of them has to either be a different type or direction different or the angle different. So let's put this back and we'll just make an angle. So we go here and already you got this nice dramatic blended gradient. So we can click here, go there. So again, it looks pretty good. Now let's try maybe a radial and let's go to center. Okay, that's not too bad. Now let's go and change this one. Let's go here, let's go angle. Let's put it here. That looks pretty good. Let's try going here. That looks really good. Notice how that vertical line here kind of looks like a starburst reflection. Pretty nice. Okay, let's try taking this, maybe make it a rectangle. And again, look at that. It's pretty nice. Let's try use the center rectangle, put them together. We get something that looks like that. Quite interesting. Now what I'm going to do with this one here, I think, is I'm going to go back to my linear. And I think what I'll do is use one of these. Okay, put it back together and we get something like that. Okay, so a beautiful blend. Okay, again, I, I like this vertical line. Definitely looks like a starburst happening in there. Okay, now I'm going to select these two and now I'm going to align them and I'm going to group them. Now, just like I showed you with the striped radial gradient demonstration, when you stretch something that's vertical, tall and thin to something that's wide, the gradients expand, so you get a kind of different look or a different view of that gradient. So I'm going to take this, which looks really good here, and I'm going to stretch it out. And you're going to see, as we stretch it out, the gradient gets bigger, bigger, bigger. We're seeing more of the center, but we're losing that vertical line. Okay, it disappears. So you have to keep that in mind. Now what I want to do, of course, is I want to put that in here. Okay, so this consisted of two gradients. So if I want a blended gradient, what do I have to do with the text? Well, I have to have two text, one for the background, one for the foreground. Now, before I duplicate this, 
I'm going to add a nice little 3D effect. I find that these blending gradients are actually very translucent. So if we add a nice little 3D effect to this text, it's going to help with the idea of them being very translucent. So let's do that. So let's go to text. Let's go to effects. I'm going to go here. I'm going to just use the round. And I'm going to make this 6. And so I'm going to use this one here. That's plastic. And I'm going to use this one that's flat. So plastic and flat. Okay, so if we look at that, it looks pretty nice. So now we're going to add the blend into it. So that means we have to create two of these. So let's duplicate it. Okay, as I've previously demonstrated, if we take this and transfer it to these two texts, we're going to have a problem because we're going from a tall design to a wide design. The gradients that we've used, the angles and directions that we use, are perfect for this tall arrangement, but they won't work very well for the wide arrangement. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to stretch it so it fits the height and width of the text. I'm going to click here. And I'm going to stretch it to fit the text, just like that. Okay, so I can see that we've lost the nice stripe. Well, that's not really a problem at all. Okay, so what I need to do is fix the bottom gradient, not the top one, the bottom one. So I've got it selected. I'm going to hit my tab key that cycles through them. And I can see I've got the bottom one. It's red to purple and there's no uh, transparency. Okay, so when it was tall, we were using this nice tall vertical gradient. Well, now we've gone to wide. So it makes sense to use one of these wide ones, the horizontal gradients. So let's click that and we get back to where we were. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so what I need to do, of course, is tab, get the background. That's the background, red, purple, no transparency. So that's the background. Now, again, I'm looking at it. So all I have to do is transfer it to this one. Okay, so I'm going to go to my text and click on gradient. PowerPoint, remember, is the last gradient that transfers it to that one. Okay, it's perfect. So I'm going to click here again. So tab once, I can see that gradient. Tab again. I can see it's going green to yellow, so that's the top one. I can see the transparencies, so I'm looking at it. And I click on my text, go to my text options, and again, gradient, and we have that. Okay, so now we just put them together, and we get that. So we can still get a nice little starburst reflections for these bright spots here. You can see they still show up quite nicely here. And again, they're both dynamic. That means you can play with both the top and the bottom one, change the angle, do whatever you like. So we can always go back and change which stops are transparent. So if I were to go here and put them all back, I can use different stops. I can make as many stops transparent as I want. So I'll just use the second one here. Jump over to this one. And I'll take that one. And again, it looks quite different. So that is basically how you do a blending gradient. Okay. Next thing is to now use a gradient pattern. I think what I should do first is to align the text, make sure they're perfectly on top of each other. So I'm going to select them, go to Format, Align, Center, and Middle. That looks pretty good. Now I think what would probably be a little better is if I could change the character spacing. Bring the characters a little closer together. That might make this nice starburst bright spot here show up a little better. So I've got them both selected. I'm going to go to my home. This is my character spacing. And let's try tight. And I think that looks a little better. Okay, and the next step is to use the blended gradient as a tiled pattern in the text. So we have to duplicate the text. We'll take the top one. Doesn't matter about the gradient because we're going to copy and paste that into the text. Now remember, when you copy and paste something into text or shape, you paste it as a picture. You don't paste it as that original object. So when we copy and paste this into the text, it'll be a picture. That means you don't have access to be able to change the blend in it, but we will be able to tile it. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to click here, go to my text. And we're going to say picture, texture, fill. Let's say clipboard. And by default, it just stretches it. So you can see it's pretty close to what this is. So when the shape is the same size as the text, which means you can do this with the blended gradients. The idea, of course, with the tiling is to create a different pattern. So 
since this is the same shape, what we want to do is scale the pattern. Okay, so we're going to click here and we're going to tile it. We're going to click this pictures, texture. That means to tile it. And again, it's not much different because it's the same size. So we'll play with the scaling here. So let's take it down to maybe 50% for both. And we get something like that. So you look at that and you go, well, those are hard edges. They're not that interesting. So we go to the mirror type. Now, the, usually the best thing to do for a mirror type is just go to both. That means it mirrors horizontally and vertically. So we click that and you can see it's different than this. So it's quite a nice pattern. And because we have the nice X and Y scale, we can create some pretty interesting patterns. So for example, if I put this back to 100 and take this down to maybe 20, you're going to get nice stripes. And if we reverse that, you can get stripes going the other way. Okay, so that's one of the advantages of the tiling process that you can scale. So that really works well when you have something that's the same size as the shape you're putting it into. Now, as a last thing, we're going to do another combination, but this time we're going to use a nice tiled image as the background. So we have the text with the tile pattern, and we're going to use a transparent gradient on top. So the transparent gradient will control how much of the background shows through. So it's very similar to this one, except when you put it on top of a nice tile background, it's a little more dramatic. Okay, so I'm going to take this gradient, I'm going to duplicate it, and just for fun, I'm going to rotate it and use it the other way. Now remember, we're going to be copying and pasting this as a picture, so it will paste exactly as we rotate it. So I'm going to make it a little smaller, something like that. I'm going to take this, I'm going to duplicate it, and what I'm going to do is set the X back to 100%. Okay, so now that this is taller than the text, when we copy and paste it, we will be able to play with the alignments. And that does make a difference to how it looks. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to click, clipboard, tile. Okay, so the default is top left. So let's click here. Let's try center. You can see a different pattern. Let's try bottom. And again, a different pattern. So it does make a difference when you play with the alignment. When the object you're copying and pasting is taller than what it's going into. Okay, now just for fun, I think I'm going to play with the Y here. I'm going to take it down to maybe 25. So we get a nice striped pattern that looks pretty good. And again, you could play with alignment. It does make a difference. It will still change. Okay, so let's say I like that. I'll keep that. Okay, now I'm going to take this top gradient that was transparent. I'm going to make a copy it and just bring it down here. I'm going to select both of them. And I'm going to line them. I'm going to make a change to this top one. We had a radial gradient in this one. And I think this will be a little better if we change it to more of a linear gradient. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to this one. Just a nice horizontal gradient. Okay, now I'm going to take the transparencies out. Now I can control this really well. So let's say I only want the nice pattern in the top and bottom. So I'm going to click on the green. Make that transparent. Click on the yellow. Make that transparent. So that looks pretty interesting. Okay, so we have a combination. Now we could also do the middle. Let's say you want the pattern only showing through the middle. So let's take that out. And let's take that one out. And let's take this one color. And let's make it transparent. And let's take the red. And let's make that transparent. So now we only have the pattern in the middle. So anyways, that's three ways of working with blended gradients. And remember, we only use this one blended gradient. There's many, many that you could create, and they're all going to be different. So you have lots of options when you work with your blended gradients. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you'd like to subscribe, we always have some interesting things to do with PowerPoint. So again, thank you for watching, and we hope to catch you on the next video.